The clever girls of the steam world, of course, are the showman's engines. People would have seen their uh, first films that show uh, shows, uh, travelling fairgrounds, this sort of thing. Uh, the rides would have been powered by these things. You would have had people looking in amazement at the electric light for the first time. And it all coming from the generator on the front. On big fairgrounds, you'd have perhaps six of these in a line, side by side, with one manic individual hurtling from one to the other, trying to keep all six going at the same time. It won't be tied in if you got it wrong. This one is from Charles Bowles up in Thetford. And uh, generator on the front there, where you get about, what, two, 300 amps at 110 volts. Normally, they say these were a 10 nominal horsepower engine. Nominal horsepower, what's that all about? Well, originally the engines were portable engines and they had to be taken from one place to another, towed by horses. If it took two horses to take, do it, it was a two horse engine, three, it was a three horse and so on. Doesn't really work out because uh, these, if you do the numbers, 200 amps, 110 volts, you're talking about 50, 60 horsepower, plus another 10 to run itself. So, yeah, it doesn't really make an awful lot of sense. But it's a, a nomenclature that's uh, still used to this day. They even had ships which had so many nominal horsepower engines. Perhaps they were using two horses, I've no idea. Next one, <coughs> thank you for getting the steam, steam uh, event going, because this guy here, I mean, if we hadn't been there, I don't think we'd be. Uh, be doing this at the moment but for some reason we couldn't get things moving this morning uh, and I know the thing number eight in the program uh, done up in the logo of new key steam bear uh, this is a phone and C type lorry tiny built in 1926 now this is called an over type why because the engine's on top of the boiler same way as it is with a uh, normal traction engine the engine on the top and the drive, as you will see, as it comes around, is by one ginormous chain going down to the rear axles. <coughs> one of the drivers many years ago wanted a spare bit of chain for his wagon, so he found Reynolds up. He said, I don't suppose you've got, and they said, yes, we have, it's in stock. So they managed to put a new chain on the thing. Next one is a ploughing engine. Now, the first person to do steam ploughing, in fact, was Avery Caporter. They did it with a whole series of uh, winches and uh, anchor points and things, and they hauled a, a plough around the field. Took quite a lot of setting up. John Fowler up in Leeds came up with the idea of having an engine either end of the field and a big winch underneath with a half a mile of rolled iron rope, it was originally. If that sounds dodgy, yes, it was. Uh, and these machines weigh about 18 tonnes and you had implements that could be pulled across the field. Usually it was a, 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 a sort of two-way plough which turned over at the end, so you could go back in the opposite direction. They also did mould draining and dredged out lakes and all sorts of things. The mould draining is the most terrifying thing you've ever seen. It's a bit of boilerplate with a bullet-shaped thing on the bottom, two wheels, and it comes silently past you. Well, if you know what it's like pushing a spade in the ground, try and move it sideways, this thing sort of goes silently past it. The engine sort of chattering away down the other end of the field, but my word, the amount of power is unbelievable. United Africa Company, Liverpool, had this one. This is a Sentinel wagon, under type, where's the engine? Underneath the floor at the back. And <coughs> this one uh, was used on Liverpool docks for many, many years. In fact, they had a whole fleet of these things. And there was a chap on Radio 4 uh, some years ago now, talking, he was one of the drivers, and he was saying the wonderful thing about this was that they were rated at uh, about five or six tonnes. They actually used to put about 25 on the back, open the throttle and off it would go. And uh, he said it was effortless power. And it, it sort of is. And they was going on about the Sentinel with a feather in its cap. If you have a look, on top of the cab where the safety valve is, yeah, it's got a feather in its cap. Another one of the big agricultural engines, big single cylinder machine with the Stevenson expansion link on the other side there, it's just inside the flywheel. It wasn't actually invented by George Stevenson, it was one of his employees and he said he'd share it with the employee, although it's just his name which appears on the pattern. So we're going to help you as a gentleman and actually did as he said. 25 Moonlight Magic now coming past. Another one of the 
roll is this one made by Rustin. Rustin's were uh, with uh, somebody else called Ackroyd were the first people in this country to come up with what was almost a diesel engine. It was a, a, an oil engine which was, uh, you had to warm this sort of bulb thing up on the side of the cylinder block with a blow lamp and then it was sort of hot bulb ignition it's called. Uh, so there's this sort of bit of an argument between who invented the diesel engine first. Was it actually Hornsby Ackroyd or was it Dr. Rudolf Diesel? Wallace expansion engine, well there you are, it's uh, coming up with the same idea, this idea of cutting the steam off so that you get a much more efficient use of the power from the boiler. Another one of the uh, agricultural engines, seven nominal horsepower this one. Both by Marshall compound, two cylinders up there again. Quite large ones in this case, and you can see the difference in the size. 